Hi, everyone. Welcome to this new webinar hosted by the Join the School in France team. First of all, before we start, can you hear me properly and can you see us? Uh, please say something in the chat box just to confirm. Okay, amazing. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. So, my name is Bastien, and I'm working at Join a School in France, recruiting international students for the Masters in Management. And today, we are going to talk in detail about the Masters in Management at Odensea Business School in the lovely city of Nantes. Okay, so this is the reason why Michelle is with us today. Hello, Michelle. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to talk about the agenda. So this is what we are going to go through today. We will kick off with a 30 minute more or less overview of Odensea Business School. Uh, we will talk about the masters in management, the program, the career services, everything you need to know uh, about Odensea Business School and the masters in management. Then uh, we will give you the opportunity to ask any unanswered questions you might have uh, during the Q&A session. So please feel free to ask whatever you want, any question you have in the chat box during our presentation, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation, OK? And then the second half of the webinar will be devoted to the admission process through Join School in France, how to apply, when, which materials, etc. And again, I'll take the question at the end of the presentation. So I think we're all good to start, Michel. So I pass the floor and uh, we will learn more about the Masters in Management at Odensea Business School. Wonderful. Thank you very much for the introduction. And thank you, everybody who's listening to this, either live or later in replay uh, for joining us. Um, I will try to be brief because I know, um, you know, it can be long and you've probably been watching a lot of webinars and a, a lot of conferences nowadays since everything is online. Um, and I'll try to keep more time than uh, after to answer any particular questions you have. And uh, if you're interested in Odensea, of course, uh, you'll have our contact information at the end to contact us uh, directly if there are any remaining questions and then join the school in France will be there for you for, for admissions procedure. So um, I will tell you a bit about the, the school, first of all, about uh, Odensea Business School, and then uh, also about Nantes. Um, as Bastien said, it is a very beautiful city. Uh, you're there at the school for your studies, but you're also there to, to have an experience uh, that will stay with you for a lifetime. So that's also important. Uh, and then I'll go more in depth uh, about our Master's in Management program uh, at Odensea, because you, you all know, certainly, the Master's in Management, um, the structure is quite similar for, for the different schools. Then each of us have particular things that are a little bit different uh, in each school. Uh, career services, uh, as you mentioned, are very important. Uh, um, and then um, also a very important topic is the scholarships, what everybody is interested in as well, but I'll make you wait until the end to talk to you about that. So to begin with, uh, of course, you're looking for academic excellence. If you're doing a master's, all of the schools that join this school in France, of course, are the very top business schools uh, in France and some of the top business schools in the world. Uh, we are one of those. Uh, we're generally ranked number six in France uh, in the, the French rankings. Uh, worldwide, I'll show you a bit of those. We were founded in 1900, so we're among the first Grande Ecole uh, to be founded in France, which is this uh, system of uh, elite um, schools. Uh, but it's not only just elite, it is also an accrediting system. So that is also a guarantee of the quality of the education uh, that you're going to get. And also the prestige and the name that will come with the degree uh, that you'll get uh, at Odensea or other Grande Ecole uh, schools. 
So um, just a, one note on expertise. So of course, you you guys will also look up. You can look up our rankings. You can look up our our accreditations. Uh, we do have one thing that sets us a little bit apart is our expertise in CSR. So that's corporate social responsibility. But it goes beyond just the, the idea of a bit of greenwashing. Um, that we do things uh, to, to make the world a better place, uh, but we really take that to another level and incorporate that into everything we do at Adensia. So uh, business for us uh, is not just about making profits or having an exciting career, it is that, but it's also a, a way to make an impact and make a change for the better uh, each each person in, in their own way. So that is also something, if that corresponds to you in the way that you're uh, your values and what you'd like to do in your life, um, then you'll really find your place uh, at Odensea. Oh, sorry. Good. Pass on. So, um, of course, academic excellence. We are, of course, strictly accredited. Uh, I say, of course, because of all the schools in Dornish School in France, uh, Equus, AACSB, and AMBA. And we have just been uh, re accredited uh, recently for all these um, for five years. So we are among the 1% of all business schools having this famous uh, triple crown, which is, of course, known worldwide. Uh, Odensia, since we're here since 1900, very prestigious name in France, but wherever you are in the world, uh, these accreditations are well known and all well recognized. So that will give you recognition to your degree um, wherever you happen to do your career. Of course, some students stay uh, uh, in France. We have um, about 40% of, of students uh, globally stay uh, in France over the different programs, uh, international students. Um, some uh, do, do their careers in Europe, some uh, go back. Uh, to their country and then incorporate everything they've learned here. So this is just a little bit of a, I just put the rankings more specifically. We have other programs that are ranked, but this is specifically for the Masters in Management. Um, in the Financial Times, uh, see 55th in the world, but we're especially strong in career services. Um, in the QS World Rankings uh, as well, we're ranked in the top 50 in the world. And then you see on the right is more the French um, rankings. Uh, one ranking I didn't put in there, but I think is important because these are all the, you know, your standard uh, prestigious rankings. You're always looking at Financial Times, The Economist. On France, it's Sujem, L'Etudiant, Le Point. But there's another ranking I didn't put here, but you can obviously see it on a website, is the happiness, happiness uh, ranking, which is actually done peer-to-peer. -peer, so it's students themselves that give their feedback. And here, Adensia was number one. So with students being um, happy, happy students and, and uh, being happy with academics, being happy in their studies, being happy where they're living, et cetera. So that's, um, that's something important. I think, honestly, we should, we should include it in here. Uh, so on the happiness level, I was talking about Nantes, about what a beautiful city it was and what a student-friendly and um, international student-friendly city it is. Um, we're the sixth largest city in France, but you know, on French standards, but I'm sure if you're from somewhere uh, like India or China, it's very tiny for you uh, because it is less than a million inhabitants. But we do have of that about 60,000 students. So many, many students from uh, French students and international students in different schools. Um, and uh, which, as I said, student friendly, there's lots of things to do. Well, normally in normal times, there's lots of bars and cafes and restaurants. There still are. We're hoping that um, by the time you'll hopefully come uh, in September, that things will be open again and you'll be able to really enjoy uh, the life. Yes, everybody is. Um, we've just opened in not uh, just to let you know, I'm sure you have questions about that. Uh, we are still uh, very cautious and the, 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 the classes are, are right now being online and we hope to open them again as soon as the government uh, will allow us. Uh, and uh, here the shops have just reopened um, as well, all of the shops. So for Christmas, all the lights are out. Uh, things are starting to get kind of back to normal, but also be, everybody being very, very careful uh, with rules about uh, social distancing, with rules about everybody wears masks everywhere, um, cleaning the hands. So uh, a very cautious reopening. So hopefully, yeah, you'll come here, you'll be able to have um, the whole experience because in Nantes, there's so many things to do, especially for students. There's It's a big cultural scene, a lot of things happening, uh, you know, um, uh, concerts and, and art uh, exhibitions. And we're only two hours from Paris by train. Uh, you can go there in a day, come back. Um, 
it's really easy to get around also the rest of Europe, also in normal times. Uh, you have low cost flights that go everywhere on a student budget. You can easily uh, travel all over all over Europe and that. You can go to the, to the beach uh, not far away as well. So that's a part of the whole experience that hopefully I said by September, you'll be able to, to really uh, enjoy. And of course the cost of living um, in Nantes is much less than in a uh, place like, like Paris, for example, about half. Um, so I said welcoming expats. I don't know if you can see here, the, the river, the Loire River goes right through the middle. Um, you have, uh, it's kind of a mix between the very modern and, and really the old, uh, we have a castle, like a medieval castle right in the middle of the city also. And the vineyard's very close by as well. If you like uh, white wine. So just to give you an idea about the school, the size, uh, we're a little bit over 5,000 students. Um, a little over a third are international students, but from over 100 different countries all around the world. And that includes exchange students and degree seeking students, which you would be. Uh, our staff is also about half our um, of our professors are also not French, are international from many different countries. So I think over 60 different countries. So the international experience you'll get not only by coming here to, to France, but also of course within the classroom, um, in the classroom uh, atmosphere. And then also you'll see later, the program also does allow you, if you wish, uh, there are optional uh, exchanges and double degrees um, within uh, the program. So, uh, uh. Next slide. So, um, of course, you come, it's all about networking nowadays. Uh, you'll get that networking uh, at Odensia. We do have one of the strongest alumni networks uh, in France, uh, but not only in France, also, also worldwide. We have um, different chapters uh, all over the world. Um, so, uh, as an alumni of Odensia, you'll have the access not only to for your classroom, but of course, for everybody who has graduated ever since and from all the different programs and around the world. And then there's different things that come with that. There's continuing education. You'll have access to online um, job offers, not only during the time you're a student, but also, uh, also after. So, so that continues. Uh, and we have 175 partnering businesses. Those are really strong business partnerships. But of course, we also work with many other companies for internships, for company missions, for, um, for, for, for case studies, consulting projects. There's a lot of hands-on, a lot of professional experience within that. Career services, um, that's a big part of it because you're coming not only to learn, but also to develop your career. So we assist you as of the first week, you'll have meetings with our career counselors. Uh, they'll help guide you, assist you in, in defining your career and, and how best to get there, which specializations to choose, what kind of internship to target. Um, we'll give you coaching on how to do your CV, how to, um, how to present yourself, we'll prepare you, do mock job interviews, um, uh, career fairs, give you access to all of these job and internship offers, and just really give you a lot of coaching and, and, and a lot of uh, assistance uh, throughout your studies to help you in your career and then, then afterwards as well. Um, so you see our, our placement rate is uh, most of the students, 92% are actually um, find uh, a job within two months of graduating. And uh, a lot of those are actually before graduating and often it's either directly or indirectly through the internship, which is at the at the end of the program. So you see over 90,000 different internship and job offers per year. So you'll have something you'll think for you within all, all of that, uh, but we'll help you also sift through it. So uh, to the heart of it, the, the Grand Nicole program, um, of course, the standard is a two-year uh, program, like all the Grand École program for you when you come in after after a, uh, a master's. So standard two years, you can make it three years if you do an optional uh, extra um, gap year uh, for an extra internship. Or you can even, this is new this year, we even allow you, if you already have like a four-year degree, you can even compress it into 18 months. It is compressed because you have the same number actually of credits because you do an extra summer term uh, sandwiched in there, uh, a summer term with uh, that's together with students from all over the world um, that come also from our, our partners. Uh, so that's also a possibility if you'd like to finish earlier. Or if not, you do the, the two-year program that has two different specializations, um, which I'll show you after. So two, two semesters of specialization, which can be in a similar field or they can be completely different as well. That's, um, that's really up to you. 
double degree options, uh, optional uh, online, uh, not online, excuse me, uh, optional uh, semesters uh, abroad. There's an additional cost if you do the semester abroad, just to let you know. Um, and then they send a track. So these are all the different things. So we've put a lot of flex flexibility into it. Um, also within the flexibility, there is online and, um, and uh, on campus options. So for the first semester, whatever happens, I was talking about we're hoping everything will come back completely to normal. September, but if ever there are any issues or even on your side, whatever it is in your country, or even if you just really prefer um, to start online, you can always start online and then come when you're ready. Um, if you have anything with your visa, whatever, you start online in September, and then you can come as you like. Of course, we, we would like you. I think you, most people would like to come in person, but there is that option. And then there are three different majors that you can also have the option of doing online. Um, if you like, I say major, that means specialization, uh, same thing. That would be um, corporate finance, pro marketing for a product manager, and consulting. The other ones will then be um, on campus. So you see here we have different options. Um, specializations you can do in finance. Some are in English. It says EN when it's taught in English and FR if it's taught in French. Um, so it also depend on your language. So uh, corporate finance, financial markets, risk management and compliance, financial strategy and investment management, financial strategy. We have management control and auditing. Then in marketing, marketing for product manager, cognac and spirits management uh, in English. And then in French, we have business development, communications and media, and marketing in the digital age. And more transversal uh, management, we have in English consulting, management for sustainable impact. I was trouble saying that word, even though I am native uh, English speaker. Uh, supply chain and purchasing management, uh, digital uh, businesses and IT, if you're more in the IT side, international projects for SME. So we have a lot in English in that. And then in French, we have the things entrepreneurship, uh, arts management, HR, um, public policies, um, audiovisual. So the double degrees, uh, you can do a double degree, which means that the end and you just do one semester of specialization and then you finish, you do a whole year of at the partner school, which is Boston University in the US, uh, Lancaster University in the UK. Um, that is also, there's also an additional cost um, uh, for that. Uh, if you, you can also do uh, international vintage, that's actually with a, um, a, a, a so you're, you'd be in France, Italy, and Portugal uh, for that. And it's all about uh, wine management, specifically. Um, and then in France, you can also do a double degree in management in the en in energy industry, which is also taught in English. Or in French, we have an MS program, Semester Spécialisé in Management du Sport, Marketing, Design, and Creation. These are all options. Nothing is mandatory. They're all options. They, we want to give you more, the most flexibility as possible. Those are the different options you can do. And lastly, uh, this is a Master of Science in Management Engineering. Why I'm talking about this? Actually, because it is an accelerated version of the Grand École program, which leads to the same degree, which is, of course, a degree which is officially certified by uh, the French government, um, a visé, we say in French. Uh, and uh, if you have a, um, a degree, you're finishing your degree in engineering, or in sciences, you can actually opt for this and it's in 18 months. So you have one semester of uh, management courses, one semester of specialization, the ones I showed you earlier, the summer term, uh, and uh, then of course the internship because at the end, I didn't put this specifically in here, but all of our programs, including our master's in management, you end with a four to six months internship because we want you to finish not only with the academics, but also with a professional experience. And that's how you can, as I said earlier, you'll get your foot in the door and, and get uh, uh, and get a job, the kind of job you're looking for. So this is open to you. If, uh, if you have a degree in engineering, you can also um, take this option as well. So now this is the question that everybody's been waiting for, uh, scholarships. Um, so, so to get you an idea of what this is, our, the full tuition, um, we're very transparent, is a little bit under 30,000 euros, 29,750 uh, for the program. We do have certain scholarships um, for the Master in Management up to 40%, between 30 and 40%. It's mainly based on diversity. We actually, this is, a, 
exclusively for September 2021. So if anybody's listening to this later, this is just something that we put into place, these scholarships, out of solidarity, because we know that these are really hard times for everybody. Uh, we know also there's some currency in certain countries countries that have really gone down compared to the euro and we know that everybody has hardships you know because of, of this pandemic so we don't want that to be in the get in the way of you getting your dream and coming to study here so this is really very specific solidarity that we put into place just for September uh, 2021 uh, so a 30 to 40 percent for the masters of management for the management engineering 30 to 60 percent 60 percent is actually also for uh, especially women in engineering because that's also to kind of do positive <laughs> discrimination to there are very few women in the engineering field so we also want to promote that and promote that diversity um, and then uh, in addition to that uh, we have a foundation um, that can under certain conditions also give a little bit of extra to help with the living costs and that is based on merit and need so you have to prove not only your excellence in academics but also um, that you do need that. The ones before that we give the, the 30, between 30 and 60%, um, that will actually be automatic just based on the criteria um, that we get. And I would be happy now to answer questions. I'll just leave this up. If anybody wants to take a screenshot or anything, you have our email address, internationaladencia.com. We have a WhatsApp. Just be careful, the WhatsApp is mainly with chat. We're not really available all the time on that but we will answer you maybe not directly uh we have a skype that we're on um our, our facebook and instagram but also you have this link i know it's a bit a long link so if you can uh, to do see that that's also if you want to have an info call with us meaning that par by skype or by whatsapp you can sign up uh, for a, a time slot and then talk to us for about 15 minutes directly ask all our questions and we'll be there for you so now i'll ask her any questions you might have um, I don't know, Bastian, are there any questions for me? Yeah, the, there's one. And please, guys, please do not hesitate to type any other questions you might have. So we've, we've got a question from Aman. Um, <laughs> how would the career services and prospects differ due to coronavirus? Yes, good question. Um, the career services themselves don't differ at all except for the format meaning that instead of going and meeting with the career counselor in person you 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 meet them online uh like you know, like this by teams or by i'm not sure exactly what the blackboard what they use um they have uh, all the career services the career fairs we have a uh, we've set everything up virtually and they they work really well um if you i don't know if you can see what Edencia does on linkedin uh they post a lot what they do with the career services um so the career fairs are online the uh the job offers anywhere are online the workshops uh that i mentioned about like a um, cv workshop or um how to boost your uh, linkedin profile how to perfect your elevator speech um all those workshops are also done uh, on online format. Um, if things go back in person, then up it'll switch to online format. I think some of them work so well on online that some it'll kind of be hybrid. So that doesn't change. The um, the second part of that question was uh, the prospects. So maybe you're talking about internships or, or, or job offers. Um, that is a little bit more complicated to, uh, with the with the pandemic. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say it's exactly the same. That's not true. Uh, anybody would say that it would, it would be false. Um, but what there are is we've adapted. We're able to adapt. That the students are still uh, could do internships, and some of the internships are internships that have. Uh, that can be done online, like work from home, like I'm working from home right now. So I think nowadays that even the um, the internships, a lot of internships can be done um, online. Um, so that is one thing. Another thing that's been put into place is instead of an internship, we have uh, um, company missions like consulting missions uh, that students can also do um, from a distance. And some of the internships are also kind of put off in, until until a little bit later. So we have adapted everything to the current conditions. Ideally, of course, we hope that when you come and by the time you get, I think because if you start in September uh, 2021, by the time you get to the stage where there's the internship, <laughs> I hope there will be vaccination and everything and everything will be totally, totally back to normal. But of course, we have with that we've set up we have instantly now we go into lockdown. We have a we have a plan B. We have plan C. We have plan D. Um, we're at, we're really 
on top of it. I don't know if that's answered your question. Well, we've got plenty of other questions. Okay, I, Mazzy, good. Yeah, I think <laughs> you answer quite well to the question. Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, a question regarding the test uh, about yes. the DMAT and the GRE. Obviously, we haven't talked about that yet. So have you got any requirements uh, regarding these tests? Uh, yes, I guess well, the, 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 the schools. Yeah, well, that's something you probably talk about when you talk about the admissions procedure with joining a school in France, um, because it's a little bit different with direct admissions. Or if you if, if you apply through joining a school in France, through joining a school in France, you need to give a, a GMAT, a GRE, a Tajmaj, or a CAT. Um, we don't have a minimum cutoff score. We actually um, each each session. Um, we we have a, a certain cutoff, so it can vary from one session to another. So it really depends on who you're up against. <laughs> um, uh, so that's um, that's. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't give you a more specific uh, answer to that. So it really depends on the session and the and the cutoff period you're, you're at. That um, honestly, this year uh, I know last year we were not. We weren't very, very selective for that because there were a lot of issues with people having access to the to the centers. But I know that GMAT now you can do it all online. Yes, yes, it's yeah. it's fully online till I think you can book an appointment till February and take it till April at the moment. Well, obviously yes. it makes sense regarding yeah, yeah, the information. Yeah. Exactly. We've got a question uh, a bit weird. What are the credit criteria of admission for Algerian students? Well, uh, I'm not Jerry? sure there's, I, I there's wait, yeah. just, just to let you know for if it's um, the the criteria for admission, uh, it, the only difference with the criteria for admission is if you have a French degree, meaning if you did your bachelor's in France and it's given by the French state, in that case, you can't go through joining school in France, you have to go through the French exam and there the admissions criteria are a little different. If you have a degree that's anywhere in the world, I don't care where it is, or even if you have French nationality, but your degree is done somewhere in the world, the admissions criteria are exactly the same. It's uh, uh, you, you need one of these test scores, you need a, a English level. Even if you are studying in French, if you want to do all your studies in French, you still need to have a certain English level. The French students do as well. Um, and if you want to study in French, then it's good to, to show a certain French level, but we don't have any requirements actually for any level of French at all. There are French as a foreign language uh, included uh, in the program. So uh, it's kind of paradoxical that you're coming to France, but there's no, there is an English requirement, but no French requirement. Um, uh, but if you're from well, Algeria, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was no. just going to say, we're Algeria, um, then you would definitely be eligible for uh, one of our, our diversity scholarships that I mentioned earlier. Okay, amazing. I was going to ask uh, about, this question about the scholarship yeah. as well. So, yeah. no, this, so this is perfect. Yes. Uh, then we've got uh, a question regarding uh, the professional experience. So we've got Jay. Uh, he has four years experience uh, uh, at EY. So is there any mm -hmm. upper cap on the work eggs, he asks? Four years of work experience. If it's full-time work experience um, after graduation. I mean, we don't discriminate. We can't. I mean, normally we do. Uh, I know in the past we've said we prefer under, uh, you know, 26 years old, or a certain age. But in fact, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't have any age discrimination uh, or in any way. So, so you can always apply. That said, I do in general recommend, just from experience, people who have four years of work experience full-time after graduation or more. Often, uh, sometimes it could be a full-time MBA, might be um, better adapted to you because uh, there'll be more in your age group. You'll, there'll be people who have work experience you can exchange with, whereas the Grand École uh, is generally uh, almost, I, I don't know, percent of like 90-something percent of people who have absolutely no work experience uh, or maybe a little bit of internships, but of just going directly from their bachelor's up and continuing into the master's. But if you have a little bit of work experience, you're also welcome. Uh, okay, thanks. Well, so you, you answer one question from Estella. She asked, is there any age limit or specific student profile you are looking for? So no age limit, you say? No, not for you. I don't know if it joins school in France that you have an age limit for those. No, uh, we admissions don't. Directly. No, no. no. Uh, direct admissions either or through, we, we don't. Uh, no. So, no. so for, it's just more of a recommendation. If you are yeah. over a certain age and you have more work experience, we do recommend an MBA because it's more adapted to, to that profile. 
so I still have a question regarding the program. Does Odentia offer data-driven courses or special specialization in business analytics or data science? Um, yes, actually, um, we're just setting it up. <laughs> uh, we're actually setting up, uh, well, maybe not for you, but we're, we we have uh, with the Central, which is a, a, a renowned engineering school, which is a partner with Odensia. Uh, we are setting up even specific uh, programs. We have an MSc in uh, data management for finance, uh, a BBA in big data and finance management. And we are setting up a specialization also um, in the field linked to that. So we are working really intensely uh, on uh, on big data, data analytics, um, AI even, uh, artificial intelligence, all applied to business. And we're working directly in partnership with the, with the Code Central with Engineering School on that. OK, thanks. But it's something that we're just, just launching really this year that we've been studying and we've been working on for a while. And this year, is is the year that that's coming out so the question is right on time <laughs> nice uh we've got a question from bavia uh he, he has he asked does audencia accept students who have a history of backlog so failed subjects in their undergraduation uh yes we we often get this question and probably this person is probably from from india i think that's something in india that is often um maybe looked frowned upon. We don't, it really depends on your academics. If we see, we totally understand if, if you're finally, or your academics, your GPA globally is good. That's what we look at. That's fine. We don't go into the minute details to see if you failed and you had to reset, et cetera, because we also understand that, you know, something, things can happen in life. You can have a hard time. You can have something, as long as you're able to pull yourself back up uh, and then improve, the, then that's fine. But it's not something that will eliminate. We really look at the global GPA. OK. Uh, well, another question regarding the GRE. Uh, so I have uh, 316 in GRE. Does that make up for it? I guess make up for the backlogs is the question. Uh, I the... think yeah. so. Ah, he's typing. Yeah. If that's the case, definitely three three fifth three sixteen uh, in GRE. Uh, that's uh, that's a good score uh, for us with our uh, admissions criteria. So so yes, that will count more than what we'd look in the backlog. It all depends on your GPA because it's not just your GRE, it's not just your GPA, it's not just your English score. It's that oh, plus that plus that plus that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, there's an interview. Um, but he's, well, you'll, you'll tell them, Bastian, about that, yeah. about that later. Um, so it's not just one thing, but there's nothing for us. There's not one thing that's totally eliminatory unless like your your GMAT or GRE is really low, unless your your GPA is really low. Um, but you wouldn't you wouldn't go to the second stage. There's the different stages in the sessions you wouldn't you would get. If you have a really low GPA, then then maybe not. But uh, if globally overall, it's the global candidate, the global person that the potential we're looking for. Yeah, obviously, bear in mind that you have to to have like a complete application, like a complete and strong application uh, package. Uh, so it's yeah. a holistic approach for all the schools uh, from joining the school in France, not not okay. only Odensia. So you you don't have to focus just on one subject to fail or something like it's a really mm -hmm. a global approach. Yeah. Yes, and to be honest, we have so many candidates. We, we we don't have time to look into minute detail. Oh, he failed that course. <laughs> we yeah. we have to look at the global picture. Yeah, do not do not worry about that. Um, so, have you got guys uh, other question before we start talking about the admission process with Join the School in France? If it's okay for you, um, we're gonna say goodbye to Michelle. So you've, it's your last chance to ask a question to Michelle. Last chance. Well, uh, last chance. As I say, you have, if anybody's interested, you have on the screen, take a screenshot right now or yeah, exactly. a picture with your phone or whatever. And if you want to contact us by email, or schedule an appointment, um, my colleagues and, and, and myself uh, in the admissions office would be really happy to answer any, any questions you have uh, specifically. And uh, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure and maybe hopefully see some of you in, in Nantes in the future.
Well, thanks a lot, Michelle, for being here with us yes. today. And you too, you too, of course, you're invited to come and to yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, Thank you. I will. When the lockdown is over, I, yeah. I go to, to Nantes uh, and visit you. With pleasure. Have a nice day, Michelle. <laughs> thank Bye. you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. So, guys, we're going to keep on the webinar. Uh, let's take a look at what it means to apply with us uh, at join. Oof, there's no presentation. You cannot see the presentation, can't you? Uh, what happened? OK, let's start again. Can you guys let me know if you can see the presentation again? Is it OK for you? Yes, OK, thanks. Um, so at Join the School in France, we recruit international students for five business schools, which are HEC, ESCP, EM Lyon, Schema, and Audencia. We've been talking uh, through this webinar. So first of all, I'd like to bring your attention on one point. We only recruit students for the Master's in Management program. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's not the MBA. It's not. Um, masters of science in engineering it's just masters in management and by applying um with joint school in france you maximize your chances of getting accepted because you're applying only once for five schools okay so that's that's the biggest advantage of of joint school in france you earn time and money uh, so let's talk uh, about the student profile and who can apply with us so the, the admission process is made only for international students. So if you have done your study in France, you cannot apply with us, even though you, you're not French. OK, you have to you have to study. You have to have done your degree out of France. OK, it's it's the, the first point, point. It's very important. And then you're eligible as long as you are in your final year of bachelor of bachelor, or if you already have your bachelor, or even if you have a master's degree. Okay, and it's open to all academic background: business, art, engineering. You can apply whatever is your uh, bachelor. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the application process. I'm going to give you some tips and explain you all the, the steps. It's very easy to apply uh, with Join a School in France because it's an online application. So you just need to fill up the form on our website. Website, sorry. You give some basic personal information about you, your name, your nationality, what you study. And it's OK, you can, you can start the application process. Obviously, we ask you for some documents. So you must provide this list uh, of documents uh, you can see on the, on the screen. So the ID documents, or so passport, or a national ID card, the diploma, or the certificate of attendance if you have not yet graduated, the complete transcript of record, which means all the semesters of your bachelor, okay? The written test scores, we're going to talk about that now. The English test scores, we're also going to, to talk about that. Two letters of recommendation, the CV, and you have to pay the application fee from Join a School in France, okay? Uh, so, my first advice is, oops, sorry, my first advice is to take the test only, uh, uh, the, the, the test, to take the test early, sorry. Uh, it's very important and I insist on that because it takes time to go to, go to through this journey, okay? Uh, so, it should be the first step of your application. If your application is incomplete because you didn't receive the official scores we cannot accept your application okay so please take them in advance so which test do we accept we accept these four tests so the gmat the gre the taj Maj, and the cat gmat and gre are uh, tests in english the taj Maj is a test in french and the cat is a test uh, for Indian people. 
Um, so you can take uh, one of those four tests. It's really up to you. We, we accept the four of them. Uh, then, uh, regarding the English test, so we, we accept these four tests, the TOEFL, the TOEIC, the IELTS, and the Cambridge. They are all valid for five years, uh, except from the Cambridge, which is valid for the whole life. Um, yes, the exception. So if you're native English speaker, you don't have to take any of these tests. Only your passport uh, will be enough to prove that, well, you have a, a good level of English. And for people who already have done their studies in English, and when, when I said studies in English, I mean the three or four years fully studied in English, it's enough. We don't need the, the English tests. However, if you have done just half of your study in English and half in another language, in another language, it's not okay. You have to take a test, okay? It really have to be the whole study, the whole bachelor um, to be in English. Then, other documents uh, you must provide. First of all, the letters of recommendation. So, uh, you have to provide two letters of recommendation, ideally academic letters, but don't worry, it's okay if you provide one from a previous employer or one from an internship, it's okay. It's okay, so you, you can do that. The only thing, the only thing um, which is important is uh, that you must have on your letter your referees contacts so the email the detail of the position etc and the letter should obviously mention your name uh, and if it's possible um, please put the institution letterhead in the top of the letter of recommendation and if it's possible a stamp at the end again it's not mandatory the step but it's always better Regarding the proof of payment, you just have to pay the 200 euro fees and upload the invoice uh, on, on your application. And there are no fee waiver. And now, uh, so we've seen everything regarding the, the supporting document, documents. Uh, so we're going to talk about the question uh, to show your motivation. So first of all, um, I'm happy to let you know that, that you don't have to write any cover letter. So it might be easier for some of you, uh, and I know that some students uh, prefer that just to answer questions. So no cover letter, and you, you, you have to answer the, the question you can see on the screen. So it's, it's very little, but I'm, I'm going to let, let you know the question, and it's it's none of a secret. They are on our website. You can find them again. But you've got to write an answer to those four questions. So describe, describe your proudest accomplishments. Describe a situation where you faced failure, what you learned. How does your application benefit the schools? And did you take part in any extracurricular activity this past? years okay so it's very easy you answer this question once one important thing is that uh, this question uh, will be used during the interview by uh, the jury so please please answer them carefully um, and yeah take time to to answer this question then uh, the eligibility results so who can who will be invited to take the interview so you may have to attend the interview if you're pre-selected or shortlisted by at least one school okay uh, so uh, you will you will have the the results two or three weeks after the application closing date closing date by email and you take the interview uh, as long as as long as you are pre-selected by at least one school. So we're going to talk in in detail about uh, the interviews. The interviews. So um, for the interviews, uh, they take take place. Well, first of all, you take just only one interview. Okay, even though you're selected by the five school, four school, or three school, you take only one interview. 
the interview takes place in the city you chose in the form when applying. So it could be, I don't know, Beijing or Hyderabad or wherever, where, wherever you, you chose. Uh, it's a face-to-face -face interview, except again during these turbulent times, obviously with the COVID-19, uh, COVID sorry. <laughs> Uh, the interview lasts about 30 minutes and takes and, uh, and again takes place in the city of your choice. It's conducted fully in English and the jury is made up of two or three alumni. Okay. Um, then a question I got a lot uh, is what question uh, should I expect during my interview? Well, 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 the interview is like a job interview. So all the interviews don't follow the same templates. Um, alumni may ask specific questions regarding your actual job responsibility, if you're currently working or if you're doing an internship, or they can ask you broad questions about your history, your personality, uh, and your goals. Um, yeah, you know, like a job interview. Uh, you you may you may talk about your hobbies, a recent trip you've made, or I don't know the worst experience you ever had. Ever had. Okay, so be prepared like a typical job interview. And also, please don't dismiss the so-called soft skills. Uh, you might have heard um, you might have heard of them. So the soft skills are like the communication ability, the way you present. So please come to the interview well-dressed, uh, like for a job interview, uh, don't be just badly dressed. Yeah, it's very important. What else can I say? Oh, yes, um, they might, the alumni might ask you questions to, to test your general general knowledge just to check if you're aware of the latest news in the world, not only in your country, but in the world. So please be ready for that. Um, I think um, it's, it's quite complete for the interview. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the final admission results. So again, you will receive an email from us uh, to let us know your results, we will send you links to connect uh, to the to the uh, we school website where you will check uh, if you are admitted or not to the school. So it's uh, around uh, two weeks after the end of the interview period, um, and that's it for that. So little summary uh, about the admission process. Uh, it's quite easy. First, you apply online, you upload all your documents, then uh, the schools and, and us, we let you know if you're invited to the interview. You take the interview, and then you've got the admission results. And again, um, I insist on that point that it takes time to collect all the supporting documents, even though the letters of recommendation your professor needs time to write the letter, so please, please ask them early. Okay. Um, then uh, this is the admission calendar. So you can see that we organized uh, we organized this year four rounds uh, of recruitment. So round one is over; it's done. We gave the uh, admission results last week. So guys, you can now apply for round two. Um, the deadline application uh, is January 7th. You, you've got till this date to complete your application. In, just so I know in the chat, let me know, guys, who wants to apply for round two and who wants to apply for round three and four, just, just to be curious. Um, um, round two, nice. Okay, so you've got uh, till January 7th. If you complete your whole application before uh, the, the December 7th, so you upload all your documents, you pay the fee, you can have a personal online meeting with, uh, one, uh, with someone from the team, so with myself or one of my colleagues, just uh, to, to check your application. 
Um, regarding the admission calendar, I think we're quite okay. I think I've, I've said everything. So take into consideration uh, this deadline. Okay, uh, and one thing, you can apply just once per year. So you cannot apply in round two and round three, for instance. And that's it for the admission process part. I'll be happy to take a few questions now in the, ch now in the chat. Um, so here are some tips. You can, guys, follow us on social media. Don't forget about that. And here's the team. So I'm going to answer the question. Um, so I'm applying in session two. I am in my final year of bachelor. OK, in the document list, a certificate of, of enrollment is asked for. Does that mean a bon bona fide certificate from the college? Yes. Um, uh, we need just a proof that you are currently taking classes. So it can be a letter or a certificate, as you said, from, from your colleague, just that says, um, uh, I, I, confirm or I, I, I confirm that this student is one of uh, our students and he's currently in his last year of bachelor, bachelor degree, okay? So it's just a proof that you are now taking your last year because you might have stopped uh, studying, uh, well, you might have stopped studying during your bachelor and, and, and so was, that's the reason why we need to prove. Um, Ayman asks, can you please explain the format and procedure to upload uh, the letter of recommendation? As due to coronavirus, I can't collect the letter of recommendation with TAM and we have to get those on email. So do not worry about that, uh, about them, about that, Amen. So if you don't have the stamp, it's not a big deal. So um, uh, regarding the format, well, you know, it's there's no like only yeah, there's no uh, one single format. Uh, we just need all the information about the the referee, as I said. So if it's a professor, uh, we need to have his position his email, uh, his number phone, everything uh, so that the school and, and us uh, can contact uh, the professor if, if we want to and if we need to. Uh, and regarding, uh, well, the way to upload it, well, it's very easy. Ask your professor to email you the letter of recommendation and you upload it on our website, okay? And if, so if for some reason uh, your professor doesn't want to send you directly uh, the letter of recommendation. You can uh, you can let him know that he can send us the uh, the letter of recommendation to the address email you can see on screen. Okay. Can you please explain the? Uh, no, this is done. I hold a French page law. Okay, and just graduated with a master's degree from a UK university. Can I apply through join a school in France? So Judith, my question. Ah, no, you've got a French page law. No. So, no, Judith, I'm sorry. You cannot apply um, with us through Join a School in France. You have, uh, you have to hold a, a, a French, uh, a non French page law to apply with us. Sorry, Judith. Round two, round two, round two. Um, I'm aiming for round three as a result and out yet for my current semester. Just does it make a difference in acceptance chances? Uh, Babe, yeah, no, don't worry. If you don't have the results of your current semester, it, it's not a problem. You can still apply with us and, uh, and, and give us the transcript you already have, OK? Do we have to send our GRE result one month before the application deadline? No, Estella, don't worry. Like, you have to send your GRE results. Ah, you mean you have to give us to us or to send to the school. So you send your GRE, ah, no, the GRE results. So the GRE results, you upload them uh, on, on, on the application on our website. So you've, you've got still the deadline to upload your results, OK? And, and the GRE team will send the will send your scores to the school directly when when they have them so do not worry about that i hope it's it's clear estella 
Uh, um, sorry, uh, if I uh, I don't manage to read the name, but is a motivation letter not required? No, again, you don't have to provide us with a motivation letter. You just have to answer the question I mentioned before. What is the Join School in France GRE code? So the results are delivered directly to you. So unfortunately, Estella, we don't have a code uh, for uh, for join join a school in France. So we put on our website the GRE codes to the schools. So you can you can put directly the codes uh, the codes from the from the schools. Okay, they are on they are on our website. Mm -hmm. By uh, does applying in round three negatively affect our acceptance chances? No, no, by uh, do not worry about that. You can apply to round three. It's exactly the same that uh, applying for round two. So do not worry about that. But again, if you've got the whole document and and everything prepared and ready, I really I highly recommend you to apply uh, to round two. Uh, Carl, besides simplicity and price, what is the advantage to applying through joint school versus directly to the school? For example, HEC Paris, direct application essay prompts are much longer than joint school in France prompts. I'm concerned the shorter prompts will adversely impact my application. No, Carl, do not worry about that. Um, so th this question uh, and this this essay question, even though they are shorter uh, than maybe the direct way, uh, it has been decided with the five school. Obviously, if we offer you, well, we created the join a school in France um, with the five schools. So the five schools wanted to 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 join the. To, to join well just to be together and to have the same procedures so you don't have to worry about that like HEC chose uh, these questions so it's it's not a problem it won't really it won't impact your application uh, I can see you are all currently typing so I'm gonna I I'm gonna wait for you uh, comments or maybe questions or answers. In the meantime, you can do not forget to follow us on the social media because we provide a lot of information about the admission process. Uh, in Facebook, we've got a private group for the students where you can ask all your questions. Uh, you can you can see on Twitter, we also post some 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 news about joint screen friends. Do you know what the percentage of accepting students from HEC Paris are admitted through joint screen in French program? Carl again, and as Michel said, um, every year um, it's it's never the same. Uh, it's never the same percentage of accepted students. So it's and. Also, there's no actually there's there's no limit of accepted accepted students. If you have a strong application, I can swear you that if you apply in, in round four and you're an excellent student, you will be accepted by HCC Paris. So just provide an application with a high GPA, a, a high GMAT, GIA, e score, Tajmash, CAT, whatever. Um, be good at the interview and and it doesn't matter if you apply to one form i am registered to take the gmat on the 28th of december and i want to apply for one two i already have a gmat score but it's not that high and this is why i'm taking it another time my question is my score isn't updated it before one two but i do apply will you consider my new score once it is updated well, the deadline is the 7th of December, um, Carl. So let's say that if you have your new official score report on the 8th or at the latest, the 9th, it could be OK. Uh, but later than that, no. I'm sorry, you will have to apply for round 3 or to apply uh, 
uh, for round two with your actual GMAT score. Okay, so that's why we've got deadline. Otherwise, we cannot we cannot accept your well the the applications. Okay. Sorry, but I'm a little confused about the GMAT results. We have to upload the official result, but do have to send it to any specific school. Yes, you have to do both, uh, Amen. Do not worry about that. So when you when you register to the GMAT exam on the GMAT uh, website, you choose you can choose uh, the join a school in France, uh, the, well, in the drop-down bar, you can choose join a school in France. The, it's a thing you cannot do with the GRE, but with GMAT, you can choose join a school in France. So uh, we, will, we will be emailed by the GMAT team about your schools, but we also ask you to upload your GMAT score as well. We ask you both. Is that clear, Eamon? Let me know, Eman, if it's clear or not about that, because it's a really important point. OK, nice. Uh, do we submit the GRE score through the official website, or can we submit the score report? I think it's kind, I'm not really sure I understood properly your question, but it's kind of the same question that uh, Eman uh, just asked. Uh, 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 for the GRE score, it's exactly the same. So except that in the drop down bar you uh, there's no join a school in france uh, school or we don't have any score for the gre uh, for the we don't have any code for the gre score so you have to choose the name of the school okay and then upload your official score report in your application uh, i hope this is clear uh, pavia again sorry if i said uh, if I don't pronounce properly your name. Um, so we have to send scores se separately to all the schools. Yes. Yes. Uh, when when you sign up uh, in, uh, the, in the GRE website, yes, you do that. So it's not you. Let's be clear. You don't have to send the scores to the schools, but you'll your scores will be sent uh, by the GRE team uh, with, the, with the school you chose when you registered. OK, is it clear? Uh, what happens if the, there is no interview center near me or, or due to lockdown, I was not able to attend the interview on the given date? Uh, well, uh, if you if there is no interview center near you, um, you email us first and we will tr when we, we we will see if we can open a new center for you, which is not sure, uh, but uh, we will try. So you can email us and ask us. Uh, and if we cannot open a new one, uh, you would you will have to travel uh, to the to the closest uh, interview center. Okay. And if due to uh, the, what, what was your question? I, I was not able to attend the interview on the given date. Well, you know, we will let you, you we will let you know the date about the interview. Uh, so you know that you have to be free. I'm gonna show you again the calendar admission. It, for instance, in round two, uh, the interview period is between February 2nd and February 16th. So please be be free during these uh, 15 days. We will let you know as soon as we've got the results uh, about your interview date, but please free, please be free. Do not plan any holidays or whatever. And if you really have, I don't know, uh, a medical interview, well, we will try to find another date, but you have to be free in the interview period, okay? So we have to send, so uh, I, I answered the question, Estella, do we have to send our GRE scores to the five schools before the application deadline or after being accepted? Again, so for the GRE, and I'm talking only about the GRE scores, um, you register for the GRE. On the GRE website, you select, uh, I think you can select, uh, 
like four schools. You cannot uh, select the five school, but you put the name of the four schools and the code of the four schools uh, you want to send use calls to. So you do that. And so this is way before you, you are accepted and way before you start applying. And when you're applying through Join the School in France, uh, you uh, upload your official score, uh, your official score report when you receive it from from the GRE. Okay, Estela, uh, creo que hablas español. Está claro. Me da mucho mejor hablar español, Estela. Así que si quieres. Um, guys, have you got any other question? <laughs> De nada. So, uh, it's been one hour. Okay, last question. And then it's over because it's been one more than hour, guys. The GIE part is not clear. In the website, it's given to report the GI score to at least one, one of the five business, business schools, right? Yes, yeah, it's right. Yeah. So wha, what, what, is, uh, what is not clear? What didn't you understand? You have to, to report to one of the five business schools and to choose the, the, the school's code uh, when you sign up for the GRE the GREA exam. So many questions about it and confused. No, it's clear. OK. No, but it's OK. Nice. I'm here to answer the question, but I know that it's not easy because it's not exactly the same process for Tajmaj, GRE, GMAT. It's different regarding the tests you chose. Uh, so I, it makes sense that it's not all clear. And, and that's why uh, we organize those kind of webinars so that you can uh, um, ask your question. Do not worry. I'm really happy to answer the question. OK. Uh, I think I see that you are typing. Uh, I think it's going to be the end of the webinar, unless you really have another question. Um, I see that Yasmin is typing. So as the British people would say, chop, chop, uh, so that I can answer the question. If I don't see the question now, I will finish the webinar, I'm sorry. OK, well, I think uh, I see that we're done with the question. Thanks a lot, everyone, uh, for joining us today and uh, for being part of this webinar. I really hope I will see your application uh, in, the coming, in the coming weeks. And if you got any other question, please let us know in the WhatsApp on our uh, email address, and we will be happy to, to answer. Take care, and I hope to, to see you soon, uh, all of you.